We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Unless you're in the Discord, you might not know this. Um, unless you're a patron, you might not know this. Every single day, not every single recording, but every single day that we record, I always let people know it's time for chimichangas. And I almost forgot. And that actually kind of bothered me to the point where I had to correct it before uh, I got to the part of the video that we actually keep. All right. Well, let's we have let's not waste we this. have secret let's... traditions. We have our public traditions. We also have our secret tra traditions for the for the yeah. patron crew. And, and one of our public traditions is uh, today's episode. Know your enemy. Oh, this is one uh, of our oldest, if not the oldest tradition <laughs> is know your enemy. This is season yes. one stuff right here. You had to talk to our um, kind of like our half brother, half sibling, um, Hawkeyes. They're uh, they in an I, <laughs> maybe. Oh, I didn't know where the hell you started talking about family <laughs> relations, and I, huh? I thought thought I, because we're both from the I family. Listen, should there's so many trophies, game trophies in the Big Ten. Why doesn't Ohio State versus Iowa just have like a giant human eye? Because that's weird. Yeah, It'd be real weird. <laughs> yeah. What else is weird is uh, Eye of the Storm games a good <laughs> is, is is a good call too for that one from Austin. Yeah. What What else is weird is this, um, or maybe not weird, but how bad this Iowa offense is here, Jared. So oh, Kyle, Kyle, let's get the business. Kyle, let's get the business. No more shenanigans. I think there's a lot, a lot of people who've probably listening here or watching us already know, probably already know a lot of these stats about this is one of the worst offenses in the country. Um, one of the worst scoring teams in the country too. But as I, as Jared and I were uh, talking uh, before we hit the record button, it's also one of the best defenses in the country too. So you got just a complete, just a complete 180 of one of the other side of the ball there. You want you want yes, you want to hear something I, weird? Yes, Buckeye Matt, we do finally get the Gus and Joel uh, show this weekend. Yeah, it's we, we we were used to getting them like every week last week or last year. Yep. Um. Yeah. But, but by the way, but again, diving into that research. Did you know you didn't, Kyle? So I'll ask the chat. Did you know there is a Big Ten team that has scored less points per game than Iowa? With an asterisk. I with an no, asterisk. it's it still lines up. It still lines up. With an asterisk. It's Rutgers. Austin said it's Rutgers. It, and it is. It's Rutgers. The asterisk, the the it, the it adjusts. It's the same thing. Trust me on that. Um, it's just the stat I originally pulled that from was from a site that deliberately didn't count FBS, which oddly enough, if you add the one, uh, FCS game that was in it, uh, that, that, that they, that they played, I don't know why I said in it, um, they only scored seven points against South Dakota state. So Actually, taking the FCS team out of the equation actually hurt Rutgers or helped Rutgers. <laughs> yes. If you take away Iowa's defensive scoring, then Rutgers scores more. You know, Austin, that is a good point. Kyle, this team, this fucking team, <laughs> one of our favorite memes this year, aside from everyone changing their name to Kabuto, in the Discord server is the concept of an Iowa touchdown. <laughs> yes yes and, and all, all started with uh the first game yeah their first game when they ended up scoring seven points but not a sit but no one touched the end zone well hold on, hold on. no offense touched the end zone no offense touched the end zone was it the first game or was it the second game uh yeah it was it was the first game against okay. uh, south dakota state when it was okay. uh the final score was seven to three yeah, yeah, yeah. They got an actual. 
they got an actual touchdown uh, in the Iowa State game in the first quarter, yeah. mind you. It was their only score of the game because Iowa. It's just yep. been a lot of fun to point out all of the unique ways that you can now score seven points in college football. And watching Iowa do it has been fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, for those that don't understand, so seven points, they ended up getting two safeties and a field goal to get the uh, seven points, which is a NCAA record, Jared. <laughs> record for what? Most... The the, um, the the fir- they were the first team to ever score seven in a point seven points in a game using the two two three combination. Yes, yes. That's not, that's not a good record. <laughs> no, it's fair. <laughs> the Ferentz nepotism special. Yeah, um, Iowa's offense terrible. Iowa's coordinator's last <laughs> name is the yeah. same as Iowa's heads coach's first name. Or last name. Damn it. Why can't I talk today? All right. Let, let me take over, Jared. You, all right, you so go. I, I, all right. So Iowa averaging a measly 240 yards on offense, uh, letting up 264, which is really good. One of one of the best in the country. It's only scoring less than 15 points a game. That's including the FBS. If I took out the FBS, they actually score more points per game. Um, but they are they are letting up just under 10 points per game on defense. Like, like I mentioned, it's just, just the complete 180 when you look at the both sides of the ball here. But, man, yeah, I just lo- – looking at Iowa here, looking at what they've done so far this year, I just I, – I just don't really have a grasp on how, how Iowa's going to really score points against – against Ohio State here. We saw how they did against... Kyle, Iowa's offense. Fair <laughs> point. Because, uh, I mean, I mean, look, look at, I mean, the, the comparison is looking at the Iowa-Michigan game, and you saw how, how hard Iowa struggled to score points in that game. And I just, I, I feel that Ohio State's just going to have their, their way with, with Iowa here. Um, Kyle. Kyle, how many <laughs> passing touchdowns does Iowa have this year? Um, not many, Jared. Uh, it is a grand total of two. Ooh, man, we got a one, a four, and a three in the guess. Y'all are so close, man. So close. So two as touchdown, a... Two touchdowns and three interceptions for... Uh, Spencer this year. Yeah. Um but so for for the sake of comparison, CJ Stroud has 24 touchdowns. 24 touchdowns this year. Uh so Okay, okay, okay. Uh, here's another game for you guys. Nomad, Nomad. Oh, I'm going to ask you specifically cuz you cuz you were talking last. I felt like a teacher for a second there. That was weird. How many, <laughs> how many Ohio state wide receivers or just pass catchers in general, how many pass catchers at Ohio state have more receiving touchdowns than the entire Iowa team has passing touchdowns. I have an eight. I have a five. I was specifically asking nomad. Oh, there we go. There's nomad with a four. The answer is seven because I don't know what you said. <laughs> oh, okay. Austin's coming in with names. Fleming, E.E., e., uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Stover. Um, sir? Uh, maybe not Stover, actually, then he says. Correct. Stover has the exact number of touchdowns as the entire Iowa passing offense. So he ties, but uh, yeah, Abuka, Harrison, Fleming, uh, all have more, all have more. So that's three, nine, six, and five, respectively. No, Xavier Johnson only has the one receiving touchdown. Yes, and and that's and that's a name we haven't heard much of these past after, few games. After 
after Fleming got healthy. Um, yes. JSN has more in spirit. <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what, JSN might have more by the end of this game because he is expected to play Kyle. That's that's been the rumor Great all year. along anyway. I mean, Ryan Day hasn't come. I don't I don't think Ryan Day's actually come out and said that. He's going to play everything right here. He's going to play everything right close to the chest. He doesn't let us know anything about injuries. How many running backs have receiving touchdowns? Are you talking about Ohio State? Um, Cause, yes, because because the answer the answer no matter which way you which way he asks here the answer is zero. Yeah, that's that is weird. I I had never really realized that until now. There are Henderson no only has, Henderson only has one catch. Hayden has two. Uh, Chop has four. Yeah, I had not really. That your, that's your. That's your running back receptions for the year. Day has to step up the swing passes. Hey, not when you don't need them. Yeah. Don't no. Don't screw with what's working. Yeah, you, you typically do that when you're trying to balance the the defense. The defense starts to be aggressive in one way. And you 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 pull out the swing pass. Oh hey, you 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 do the um uh you do the screen to kind of ease up the pressure. But yeah, honestly hasn't really need that. So, yeah, uh, so, uh, ba basically, I think what Kyle and I are trying to say is Iowa's offense is very bad. But as bad as the offense is, the defense is always also like that good. Um, they're they might be only scoring 16.2 points per game, but they're only allowing 11.2. They might only be getting 253 yards a game. They're only letting up 296. You know, uh, points per play. Uh, they're 113th in the country. Opponents points per play. They're number one in the country. Game prediction, OSU by 70 to double our loss total in the first meeting. In the last meeting. Don't know why. I was like, first, when would that have been? Last meeting. Yeah, uh, but that wasn't the last meeting, was it? Or is it just Purdue we've had revenge on since? I think it was Purdue. It was Purdue. Okay. That's funny. Yeah. We haven't played Rector, or I mean, we haven't played Iowa in all that time. That is weird. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Right, so but again, you might think to yourself, Iowa has good running backs and Iowa has good offensive linemen. There's big corn fed offensive linemen. Uh, rushing yards, 2.9 a carry. 2.9 a carry. Opponent rushing yards. 3.4, which is still pretty good, but compared to a lot of their other defensive stats has uh, is been pretty low. Um, it, mm -hmm. It's uh, not not as impressive as, say, a lot of their other stats. Um, ex example, opponents yards per pass. They're number two in the country. We'll see if they hold on to that after this game. Yeah. Uh, probably but, not, but we'll, we'll, we'll see if it's closer to their normal or our normal. I'm going to put some um, stats here in the chat here, Jared. So there are three running backs here uh, have a grand total of uh, about, what is that? For about 550 yards total between the three, the three of them on um, that. Uh, Kaelin Johnson, Deshaun Williams, and Gavin Williams, about, about uh, 550 yards total. Ohio State here. So I put the Ohio State stats in there. So not Chop gonna be able to read with, those. Yeah, just, just okay. read it. So Chop, Chop has about 500 yards just himself. Henderson 430, and Date and Hayden Jared. Hayden has more yards by himself as a third string running back than any of the uh, three running backs at Iowa. Yeah, of course. With all the late game carries he's been getting, he's basically been one of the starters. <laughs> it feels that. I mean, he doesn't have much less carries. 64 versus 68 versus 52, if I'm reading that correctly. On a better yard per two. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, will Fran be at the game? Don't know. Chop damn near has as much as all three. I, it's it's yep. closer than you would uh, want it to be <laughs> if you were Iowa. Yes. 
So, Kyle, I think uh, the it, question we have to answer, uh, Ohio State's defense all of a sudden is really, really good. I mean, statistically, that can't be denied. How's Iowa going to score? Where 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 does Iowa get its points if, from from well, the offense? From the offense. <laughs> from the offense. The only way that I really see Iowa really getting points is because the defense set them up to score the points. So like creating a turnover? Yes. Um, Iowa, uh, pretty good as far as turnovers goes. Uh, they're averaging nearly one and a half plus, not one and a half turnovers, plus one and a half turnovers per game. Uh, so Iowa does create a lot of turnovers. Uh, minimum number of yards for an Iowa score. Um, are you, for an Iowa score, I mean, a half. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like they could get scores in all sorts of different ways. Right. Um, I would I would say minimum yards. Oh, wait, are you trying to? Are you saying? Do you mean to say maximum yards? Do you mean to say how close do they have to start with the ball? Realistically, how many yards they had to it, gain to score? It really depends on how the defense sets them up. Maybe maybe the force Ohio State on a on a three and out, and they had them pinned in the trestle ball. You have them. You have them pinned inside their ten yard line. You go. You get them to go three and out. Punt. You get the ball at the fifty yard line. And you only have to go maybe twenty yards and you can kick a field goal. Hey, you got three points there. You know, I I think that that's a. I think it's a, I, yeah. It's if they score as Iowa as Kyle said about Iowa, um, as Kyle said, it's probably going to be because of something their defense, you know, did directly or indirectly. Uh, mm -hmm. Keeping them in good field position so that when they get the ball back, they can attempt to out punt Ohio State. Um, and I know, I know uh, that look at that, they're, they're, they're typing. They don't like the idea of someone out punting um, our favorite Aussie, our current favorite Aussie. Uh, but Well, let's 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 look at the let's look at the well, Michigan game. Let's let's look at the Iowa Michigan has a game. damn good punter too. It's all I'm trying to say. They do, yes, yes. So let's let's compare to the Michigan game here. So it was thirteen nothing at halftime, and uh, and then Michigan scored a couple more to um, to put it away. But you look at the stats here. Iowa only had 35 rushing yards on 24 carries, one and a half yards per carry. Reminds me of a game that Ohio State recently had too, doesn't it? Uh, the reason that Ohio, the reason Iowa got in, got in back into the game, was because of their quarterback uh, Spencer um, actually had himself a pretty decent game uh, compared to his average, what he usually has, which is about 156 yards a game. He had he had almost 250 in this game, and um, Completed 21 for 31. So what is that? Um, about 70%. I'm, my math's probably off there, but but he had himself a really good game, and he was the reason that Iowa was able to get in the game. Now, one, one of the criticisms we've had so far this year, I know we just did our mid-year review on Monday, last Monday's episode. One of the things that we like to see from this Ohio State defense is improving uh the corners. Now you look at the you look at the tape. You look at um, what the corners have done so far. And overall, they've done a good job. And sometimes it just the receiver made made the play there. But there's other times you, you kind of cringe a little bit of some of the game of the plays that the corners had. If Iowa is to make this a game, Spencer is going to have to have himself another good game, like he did against Michigan. And and the defense needs to step up. They they forced Michigan to punt uh, four times in this game, so they they need a they need to force Ohio State to punt as well. Yeah, I mean Petrus. I mean, I mean, we can talk about Petrus, um, but like it's he is who he is. I don't think anyone has any delusions about 
who he is as a quarterback. Um, I'm, I'm Patrick, not equating. I'm not equating Michigan to Ohio State, but that's that's the game that we kind of have to reference because I mean, the only Ohio game where they've State played in, anything even similar in talent level. It's exactly, and you know, similar. Kyle so is Gardner wearing Iowa gray. It's literally Sloopcast merch that you can find at merch.thesloopcast.com. Thanks, Suncard. I know you meant really to do that on purpose. <laughs> Always be plugging. That's right. I'm training them. <laughs> All right. Uh, so really, really the difference maker. I know mentioned that Spencer's got a, he's got to have himself a great game here, but who's he passing it to? Well, we're talking about Iowa here, Jared. And when we talk about Iowa, we talk about uh, everyone's favorite position here in the chat, the tight end position. Yeah, but not, not when it's Iowa's tight ends. No, no. <laughs> uh, Sam Laporta leads the team by far. And I mean by far in, in receptions, has 30 receptions. Um, and the next, the next reception is 14. So he's over doubling of the next reception from a wide receiver. It has more yards for the season with 278 yards, but does not have a touchdown, but it's kind of hard to get a touchdown when your quarterback's only thrown two for the year. Uh, Zach, uh, Gee Scott got his touchdown last game. Um, yes, he did. And also, Kylie, I think you're, you're also bearing a bit of the lead here. If we're talking about the dominance of the Iowa tight ends... And I do think we need to say Ooh. tight ends. You also need yeah. to say who their third leading receiver is. Uh, His name is Luke third? Lachey. He's he's not their third, but keep going. Uh, no, well, by yards, he's actually, excuse me, you're right. He's actually second. Yeah, you know, by yards. Yes, by yards. Yes. <laughs> their, their second oh, I'm sorry, Kyle. Is... I'm sorry, Kyle. Are, are you thrown by the fact that the tight end has the best average per reception on the team yes. and it's not even their starting tight end? Yes. Son of Nick. Like, uh, yes, he is. Absolutely. Yes, he Gangland. is. Gangland. Yep. yep. Luke Lachey. Yep. He is the son of Nick Lachey. No, not, not, not Nick. Uh, I'm sorry. Not no, Nick. he said I, Nick. I read that wrong. I was no, 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 <laughs> no, no. He said Nick. I was just going with the joke. Gotcha, Jim. Um, Jim Lachey. Yeah, thank you. Jim if you Lachey. have ever listened to an Ohio State broadcast on the radio, you know who Jim Lachey is. Yes, absolutely. I, he just said "son of Nick Lachey," and I just go, "Yeah, son of Nick Lachey." You know, it was just kind of Thanks, a joke. Jared. Anyway. Thanks, I'm Jared. sorry, Kyle. Thanks, Jared. Kyle's um, yeah. Kyle's uh, Will Ferrell from Anchorman. If you put something, um, no, not Jim Leahy. That's someone different. You put you put something on the uh, projector in front of him. He's going to read it. All right, all right. We're moving <laughs> on. We're moving on here. Uh, so Luke Lachey has half of the touchdowns. As I mentioned, like Iowa only has two touchdowns, and he he has half of them for for the uh, receiving core. You know what else? I just like the lack of scoring by this by this Iowa team. Kyle, how many y'all are going to hate me for this one? How many game minutes did it take Iowa to get more touchdowns against us a few years back versus what they have now? I'm not going to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to look it up. Uh, two game minutes. I think that one's a bit. Uh, watch Iowa have an offense for this game. They won't. The the, the won't. horses just aren't there. There there's no nope. there's no it's, magic they're gonna pull out of any hats here. There's there the the horses simply aren't there. Well, let's let's talk let's talk about the horse for Iowa. And that's their defense here. So let's let's swap uh, sides here. And talk about the defense here. We talk about Iowa. We talk about their linebackers here, and you got. Uh, Jake Campbell and Seth Benson leading the team. They're the leaders of this, of this defense here. And we, we've seen it a number of times here. You've probably seen uh, highlights of their defensive back, uh, Cooper Dijon. 
has three interceptions and a touchdown for the for the season already. Um, yeah, this this defense will get after you. They're gonna they're gonna try to make Stroud make mistakes here, but I I just think Stroud is just way too smart, way too smart to try to fall into these um uh, these uh I don't even know how to phrase it, but just the, the way that traps, schemes, yeah, maybe trap schemes, baits. Is, isn't isn't going to isn't going to fall into those um the schemes that I was going to throw at him. Yes, no sun card. Sun card. Yes. No sun card. <laughs> <laughs> no. I like that I said yes and you said no immediately to the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we we talked and, a and, lot. And, we talked a lot about Iowa's linebackers. Uh, during the Big Ten preview show that we did in August. And f- with good reason, with good reason, like they're excellent. And, you know, a lot of the things that we that Kyle and I or college football people as a whole. Would have thought about what was going to happen during this Big Ten season have been wrong. I don't think uh, I don't think any of us. Uh, saw Wisconsin season going the way Wisconsin season's going. And I think we were wanting or expecting Minnesota to be better than they are, but injuries have been a huge issue for them. So that's kind of a pass for everyone on that one. But one of the things we absolutely got right was how good these Iowa linebackers are and how, excuse me, good this Iowa defense is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the the other, the other player to really keep an eye out for on this uh, Iowa defense, somebody who's just going to, be making plays, uh, their, their safety, um, uh, uh, Merriweather. Uh, he's, he makes a lot of plays. He, he's, he has an interception for the year. He has a, um, touchdown from a fumble recovery for the year to fifth on the team on total tackles. Uh, another, another player to keep an out eye out for, but I don't, don't expect Ohio state to score a lot of points in this game. They're not, if they if they can really score well, forty, if when they you can, say if they can, if they can score forty points in this game, I'd yeah. I'd be like, wow, that's that that's a statement right there. But I think I think I think forty would be asking too much against this kind of defense. I, I I'm not going to go that far. Um, yeah, I just don't expect Ohio State to get like forty two by like midway through the third quarter, like they've been doing recently. I think they can still score over 40 points. I just think it's going to take them four quarters to get there. Yeah. So here's here. Here's because I see, I see Austin says he disagrees. Uh, we will get 40 easy. So the the only way that I really see, Ohio I'm in State between you two. Po- yeah. The, the, the only way I can see Ohio State getting 40 points in this game is if they force so many three and outs that their defense just gets just exhausted. Ohio state's offense is on the field a lot and just wearing them out and they just cannot keep up. That's really the only which way is, they, they force, which is they a force very it could, realistic possibility. Um, it, it really could. Yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious on what their um, third I'm, down percentage. Terrible. So their third down percentage, Iowa is, under 30% on third down um, efficiency here. Uh, and uh, for good. the record, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> that is bad. That's very bad. Nope. That being said, they are holding opponents about 35%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 67 to two is realistic. Um, I don't, I, I mean, you have to give this Iowa defense credit. This is actually like legitimately a very good Iowa defense. It is. Uh, don't don't go into this game thinking it's going to be Rutgers. Don't go into this game thinking this is going to be Arkansas State or whoever else. But Ohio State has a great offense. I agree with you. But and if, if Ohio State, and I think that they will, surpasses 42 points in this game, that's because their offense is great. Mm-hmm. They're not going to score on all three drives on their all three of their first drives. I'll, I'll say that right now. Ohio State's been really, really used to scoring 21 points on their first three drives. They're not going to do it this game. I think they'll add a little. I think they'll score a little bit more later because I think the time of possession is going to be out of whack. 
Uh, how many points did we put on number four defense Toledo? Um, more than we put on number one defense Notre Dame because those two rankings were equally accurate. Uh, what right, is the over? Now, what that, what that, is the over? What what do you? Uh, what's the over? How many points? What, what are you guys or, talking about? Like the over under for the entire game? It's was like forty. 49 right 49 yeah and uh ohio state's favored by is it 28 i believe 28 so you're looking at a um see austin but that's my thing like they're giving money away no they no they don't i just think that that's kind of proving that i'm a little more in line i still i would still say take the over i still say take the over but it's still 49 points, which is essentially what, like 42 to seven, which I think is a kind of a realistic, a very realistic final score here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, let's jump into our, um, our picks here, Jared. Uh, do you have a guest picker for this week? Uh, yeah, uh, we have Dinger. We have Dinger. Uh, the spread is 28 and you don't think we score 42 plus. Uh, someone do the math. Um, 49 divide by two. So let's just say 24. Let's just say, no, that's the wrong way of doing this. Um, no, it would have to be 49 minus 28. Someone do 49 minus 28. And tell me what it is. 49 minus 28 is 21. 21. Now take that yeah, 21. It's 39 to 10. He he has that right. It's it's about 39, 38 to 10. Yeah. That that's like your Vegas predict. Yeah, Sun Card's already on top of it. He got there before I did. Um that's like 39 to 10 is essentially what Vegas says that that's like the predicted, like 38 is more of an act, more of a uh, traditional like football score. So I would say like 38 to 10 is what Vegas is predicting this game will be essentially. Um, mm -hmm. Isn't Iowa isn't getting 10. They could. Um, it could be a BS fourth quarter touchdown or defensive touchdown. Um, and they get the other three through some sort of field position penalty turnover yep. thing. You know what I mean? Like it's, they can get 10. It's that's just how football works. Now, could right. they also get zero? Yeah, they could. They really could. All right, let's let's jump into our picks here. So our first one here, Jared, is Ohio State player to watch. Who do you got? Who do you got for Ohio State player to watch in this game? Um, I have uh basically in like I try not to do this too often. Uh, but it's just you gotta say like CJ Stroud. I think you have CJ Stroud, you have what is who is supposed to be your Heisman leading quarterback going against one of the top rated passing defenses in the country. I think it's a very interesting thing to watch play out. Um, and I'm also, you know, very interested to see, you know, we're supposed to allegedly be getting JSN back this game. I think if you said JSN here, I think that would also be a interesting mm -hmm. I mean, they've been doing okay without him, obviously. Um, but yeah. So my player to watch, I have the one, the great, the great name, the great defensive name as a linebacker. Uh, I have Steel Chambers. I have Steel, Steel Chambers, Chambers as my player to watch. Uh, no, not not Tommy Pickles. <laughs> But you could you could say Eichenberg. You could say Eichenberg. But no, I got Chambers got to to cover up the um the tight end there, uh Sam Laporta. Uh I think if I think St Chambers has a really good maybe not a favorable matchup, but I think he can um make it very difficult for him to to make plays and try to be that difference maker to try to extend plays there. Could this be a game? where we might actually see three linebackers. Uh, Knowles yeah. talked in the beginning of the year that, you know, well, I always ran the, the four, two, five, 
at at Oklahoma State that in the Big Ten it might makes it might make more sense that you see well uh, Austin also brings up a five two four which if one of those guys is your Leo he's kind of roaming around is yeah. he's kind of like both yeah if that makes sense um. So, yeah, but you might see this game be seven people in the box versus your normal Ohio State six. I think that'll be an interesting thing to keep an eye out on. Yeah. That being said, it's not like they have some sort of massive running attack. Like this isn't yeah, a agreed. I was bad at passing, but they got a pretty good running. No, they they just they don't even have a good running game. Yeah, I say All put right, 10 in little... the box. <laughs> uh, that would be funny. It'd be funny. Maybe. All right. Uh... The enemy player to watch, so the Iowa player to watch in this game. I mentioned it earlier. He's going to have to be the one to make the plays here. I got it's it's their quarterback, uh, uh, Spencer. Um, Spencer's going to be the one that has to make the plays. He's going to have to have another good game passing the ball, not turning the ball over, having to get over two. I'm going to say over 250 yards. If he gets over 250 passing yards in this game somehow. Uh, that means that Iowa is able to extend their drives and potentially put points in the on the board there. Stewart goes pump block, pump block formation the whole game. <laughs> you know, just, just like 10, just like 10 guys right up on the line and one big one safety all the way back. It, it might be fun. I, you know, you yeah. might try it for a player. Right. Who, who, who do you got, Jared? Speaking of the pump block formation, I have Tory Taylor. And if you're wondering, Jared, who the hell's Tory Taylor? He might be the best punter in the country. Yes, I know we love our own special uh, Aussie. But again, I think if, if Iowa has a chance to score in this game. They're going to have to do so with ball control, with flipping the field, maybe forcing Ohio State into like a you know, stuck on their own one yard line situation, get some good field position, maybe get a field goal, maybe get a touchdown. Like it's going to be some trestle ball stuff on, on Iowa side. All right. No, uh, I was playing the, the character of the what, audience sun card. What does, well, what does, you uh, might be thinking to yourself, Jared, see, I'm like in the mind, I'm in the personifying the audience. What do you, what do you have, or what does Dinger have for for the enemy player to watch? I love when you just write stuff in the chat and pretend like you didn't. Uh, Dinger has. I, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What, is, there, what does Dinger uh, have, Jared? Iowa tight end star Sam Laporta. Yeah, I mentioned him a number of times too. Yeah, absolutely. All right, key key matchup here, Jared. I'm I'm going to stick with my my theme here. Tight end, tight end with um, the tight ends with Iowa versus Ohio State's linebackers. I'm not, I'm not worried about the receivers at all. The only way that the only way Iowa is going to be able to extend plays, maybe it's third and five, third and six, and they're able to get six, seven yard from um, from their short pass yards to to the tight end, and it's going to be up to, up to the linebackers to uh, to stop that. So. I'm, I got the tight end versus Iowa's tight end versus Ohio State's linebackers. Um, I have Ohio State's interior offensive lineman versus the defensive tackles of of Iowa. Um, th this game can feel very new and very different, and especially from the Ryan Day side, it might be a little bit more familiar over the Iowa side. And sometimes when you play a team that's a little more old school and a little more familiar, you have to win games that they make you play. Yep. And to me, for me, uh, you meet that because I was I was I heard this somewhere and I, I always liked it. If you want to if you want to beat a team. Attack their weaknesses, if you want to demoralize a team, attack their strengths. Yeah. I say go right into the teeth of the monster. Jared's uh, uh, take is corny. Sure. If if you say you so. You know. <laughs> That's a pun on uh, Iowa. It, 
Did um Fair. the Dinger put anything here for the key matchup? He did not. All right. All right. So we're going to move to the spread here at the lock-in from our uh, CBS Sports Pick'em. Um, you have this wrong, Jared. It's 28 and a half did I, points. Did I not write 28 and a half points? You did, you did 25 and a half. I was like, oh, that maybe you changed my mind. 28 and a half points here. Uh, so because of that, um, I did some math here, Jared. Did some math because I know you love math here. Okay. Uh, so I have... I have Ohio State final score of Ohio State 31, Iowa 10. 31 to 10. 31 to 10. So you're not picking Ohio State. I am to win. I, but, I do want to point out. But in I, the slip Jared, picks. I, want, I want to point out, though, Jared. I want to point out. But in the sloop picks, Jared, Jared, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Jared. I want to point out that every time that we we do a uh -huh. prediction of the spread for Ohio State, every uh -huh. time this year, uh huh, I've guessed correctly. You've picked the Ohio State game correctly every time this year. Mm -hmm. Yes, for the for the spread. So it's your fault. All the games when Ohio State underperformed is your fault. It was wow. just, it was, it was, it was wow. just uh, Notre Dame. Wow. All right, Nomad, since you're winning the pickums, who do you, who do you have here? Who did I think you he said, I think he said he agreed with your score. Oh, you did? Somewhere you did, up there. I, I can't find it with, in, in between no. all of the people booing you. All the people booing you, Kyle, I can't find what Nomad said. I might be wrong because I just can't get past all of these boos in the chat. <laughs> all right what do you have jared what do you have uh i have ohio state 42 iowa 10 that is not a nice score jared it's not nice you, there's there's no chance in hell we're getting to 69 this week we're just we're not doing it that's 69's off the board this week that's that's 20 points over the vegas over under uh you were we're not getting to 69 this week you know as i mentioned before if ohio state gets 40 points or more i'd be i mean i'm ecstatic i'd be ecstatic for for ohio state to score that many points 42 I only guess if they get if they if they get 40 six, or more points, I'd be I'd be ecstatic. I'm just saying it's only four more points than you predicted. Right? You said 38. I said no, 42. I guess 31. Oh, you 31. said 31. 31, 31. Never mind then. Yeah, you're a bad person. God. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, I think <laughs> you're really un, you're really underestimating this Iowa defense. I know you mentioned it all all episode. Don't underestimate this is really good. Uh, this is a really good Iowa team. We're going to score 42 points. Yeah. This, this is the best offense we've seen in college football since Joe Burrow and LSU. This is the best yeah. offense we've seen in college football since Joe Burrow and LSU. Yes, this Iowa defense is very good, which is why... Ohio State is only going to score 42. <laughs> it's time to mute Kyle the Gray's mic. Kyle, the chat has actually turned on you for once. They're normally turning on me. This is fun for me. Well, um, joke's on them. Even if they muted me on the Discord, the recording's still live. <laughs> yeah, it would still work on the recording. But if one of the mods gets you in the server, then there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm i'm curious here when i oops i'm probably not going to find it in time here but we're, we're just going to move on here so um so i guess dinger didn't have any any picks here he didn't give us. me a final score but he did say that he has ohio state to cover he does have ohio state to cover okay all right uh, we have right. over-unders. 
Austin said he was going to submit the over unders. Uh, he you may not. He may have submitted them after you took your screenshots. Uh, Austin okay. says he did submit the over unders. Smart move. Uh, smart move to move on Kyle. Kyle was your about enemy. To... Why, why? Why do you keep saying that, Sun Card? What? 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 What, am, what did I do wrong to you? You disrespected all of Buckeye Nation by saying they'd win but not cover. <laughs> Sun card, you're you're lucky I like you. <laughs> you're lucky I like you. Uh, All right. Um, so we got to know our enemy here, Iowa. Uh noon game here. Get the Gus Johnson special here. Uh anything else, Jared? Anything else before we uh before we wrap it up here? Well, Austin. Austin's over unders. Austin over and unders. Ah, I, I missed that. Did, I, did, he, I not... did he post it? Kyle, I had a whole conversation with you about this like 30 seconds ago. I'm sorry. I got distracted because I was looking up stats for that 2019 LSU team, and I did find it. There was one game (laughs) where they did struggle offensively. They did struggle one game in their um, in their 2019 year. So maybe that could be this year because they're playing a tough defense here for um, with Ohio State here. Maybe we'll see. All right. Um, I am finding his over unders. I am copying them here, Jared. So we can look at them. Austin says hospital or not. I'll be damned if my OUs aren't posted. (laughs) All right, here we go. Austin's over unders hospital edition. Iowa touchdowns in the first three quarters at 0.5. You know, with my with my final prediction prediction here with ten points, same with Jared. I'll go over. I'll go over. It's more likely that they're going to score a touchdown in the first three quarters than the last than one quarter. So I'm going to go with the better odds and say over there. But I, I get what he's saying. Like he's saying, does it happen against the starters or the backups? I think is what he's saying. Um. Yeah, I mean, that's true, but <laughs> what do you got, oh, Jared? He says to because because, because everybody's said, oh, against me right now. Oh, get over it. I am. It's literally always me in every other episode. <laughs> um. Uh, got, t- <laughs> Austin says he'll allow two safeties and a field goal since it is an Iowa touchdown. Um, I'm going to go under. I just don't think you're ever going to make money betting on Iowa to ever score a touchdown. So it just like it's fair. It just that's fair. Feels like a bad idea. All right. Ohio State passing yards, 323 and a half. uh, Passing yards in this game. I'm I'm going to go under again here. I think Ohio State's going to I think they'll have more more success running the ball here. Um, or not, I, I should I should phrase that better. Um, I think Ohio State will be able to have be be able to run the ball more successfully than other teams have against Iowa. So I don't think uh, CJ they're going to ask CJ Stroud as much out of him to uh, to win the game here. Iowa's currently allowing only a hundred and sixty seven passing yards per game. So this would essentially double their average. Um, yeah. But I do, it feels very necessary at a certain point to point out that the only decent offense Ohio, or excuse me, that Iowa has played this year is Michigan. And Michigan was perfectly happy to run the ball a thousand times. Like they it didn't really even try. So yeah. we've obviously been talking up this defense a lot. But they haven't they haven't played a team that can throw the football. Iowa State's a good football team, but they don't throw the football. Illinois, much the same. Um, I'm going to say over because I just sure. they, they ain't ready for what's about to hit them. Offensively speaking. All right. All right. Uh, Ruggle field goal attempts at one and a half. I'll go over with this one, too. I'll go over. 
Uh, sorry, I was trying to figure out what the hell. I looked away from the chat for one second. And Ruggles, Ruggles field goal attempts at one and a half. Ooh. Over. I know my final score didn't allow for any field goals, but over. Maybe it's 41 to 10. So you're going over? Yes. <laughs> Noah has only has only kicked three field goals, attempted three field goals this year so far. I'm feeling a little worse about that all of a sudden, but we're but we move forward. The the the, the bet's been submitted. All right, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Stover touchdowns combined at one and a half. Over, over. I'm going over in this one. Yeah. So you guys can hate me a little little less here. Those are literally uh, Tommy, the red zone targets. Yeah. Tommy Pickles, I can Borland tackles. No, oh, what are you still doing with the Borland shit, my man? It's time to let that go. It's really Austin. It's really time to Austin. let that go. Austin. You're lucky I like you. Uh <laughs> Tommy uh Eichenberg at ten and a half tackles. Um I'm going to say under, and I say that because I don't know how many snaps I was going to get. He's averaging um, eight and a half tackles a game. Yeah, and I just don't necessarily see Iowa running a lot of plays, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, yeah I'm going under. I go under in this one. And how many of those uh, see, plays Iowa... end in incompletions? I just don't know how many tackles there are to be had against this team. Yeah. To Iowa total offense yards at 199.5. Ooh. Having a holding a team to under 200 yards in the game. You know, if Ohio State does that, that's 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 more bragging rights against Michigan there. Uh yeah, <laughs> Iowa's currently uh offensive yards per game at 253. Um now, I say that they haven't played any passing offenses this year. They have played some good defenses this year. Like, they, they have played some good defenses this year. Um, one, keep them under 200 would be a, a C Sun card. Keeping them under 200 would, would be impressive, but not like insane. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take the under on that one. I'll take the over, but I don't think they get much more than that. It's just hard because I think I do think there'll be like junk yards happening at the end of the game is really. Yeah. All right. And the last one, Ohio State tackle for losses at seven and a half. I think I'm going to go under with this one. I think I was going to have to try to score points here. They're going to start passing the ball more and they're just. It's going to it's going to cause less tackle for losses here. So I'm going to go under. Austin, what's that feels like a lot. Do you have like how many how many tack seven and a half tackles for loss in a single game feels like a lot. Um, or is there Ohio State yeah. averages six and a half per game? Wow. Really? Wow. They have six and a half tackles behind the line of scrimmage at this point all last year. Or at it's, to this point last great. year. Um, um so I'm asking if they get two extra against the bad. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's it's very doable. Um, I'm glad I asked the question. So yeah, I'm gonna go mm -hmm. over. All right. All right, and that is Austin's over unders the hospital edition. Get well soon. Yes, get well soon, Austin. All right, that is it, Jared. That is our episode here. Uh, love you too, Austin. Uh, you, got, you got anything else before we wrap it up, Jared? <laughs> he goes, I meant to do a thumbs up, but that fits too. <laughs> uh, that's what anything she else, said. Uh, no. No, um, I mean, yeah, like visit visit the 7071 store by going to 7071.thesloopcast.com. Uh, 7071 um, 
that has a bunch of like Ohio State uh, inspired, but not copyright infringing merch. Um, if you want, uh, or no, well, yeah, it, it actually, that's more of our store. That's more of the merch dot the sloop cat. That's the sloop cast store. Merch dot the sloop cast.com. 7071 is more just like generic Ohio stuff. Um, some really cool stuff in there, including, um, a bunch of defunct NFL franchises, uh, from the early days of the NFL. And, uh, I can do those logos because those teams uh, went bankrupt and don't exist anymore. So that's some that's some of the cool stuff you can find over at seven zero seven one dot sloopcast dot com. Um, Patreon three dollars a month and you can join the hooligans that are right below Kyle in the uh, in the YouTube video there. Uh, I think that's all the plugs I have for tonight. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Honestly, I really don't. It's been a pretty quiet week so far in terms of just really a lot of news. Uh, I think one of the I think one of the funny things here that we saw after the Tennessee Alabama uh, game was how the Tennessee uh, students took the field goal post and chucked it into the uh, into the river. But little did they know uh, they they kind of need a field goal post to a uh, play this saturday <laughs> so they're going to have to find a field goal post to to put up onto the field before they before they kick off on saturday which they'll probably just steal one from the practice field if we're just being honest <laughs> that's because you because you know I, like uh just kyle i think you're um, missing su supply supply issues and all that it, it, it is a thing so maybe kyle, they'll I, steal a... I think you're missing the best part of this story in my opinion yeah. That they you asked the, the fans to out? pay for it. Oh. They asked the fans to pay for it. Well, I think that's that's my favorite part of the story. They basically put up a not a GoFundMe GoFundMe asking people to trip in to to pay and for both the field goal post and the hundred thousand dollar fine uh, yeah, the, from that, the SEC. The SEC fine is dumb. Like why? Why do you do that? You 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 ruin to dissuade it to, to dissuade it from happening. Because okay, no, so it, let me let me put it to you this way. Let me put it to it, you this way. The schools don't want the students, the fans doing that. They don't want that. It's a security issue. There's lots of potential ways that could go bad, especially from like an insurance I, I mean, standpoint. Hold on, but the universities don't want to be the bad guys. So what they do. All of the presidents who are the presidents of the universities, they get together and as a conference decide that it's against the rules to do this. And then when they have to in, put in more security and they say, oh, well, it's not our rules. It's the SEC's rules. So they're just kind of deflecting blame to the conference for a thing that the presidents want. But it's it's a huge like. I understand, I understand. I understand what you're saying, but the big question is, when the whole conference realignment happens, um, maybe sooner than later, and Clemson joins the SEC. What, That's what exactly Clemson what do? I'm saying, Austin. But the presidents tell the SEC what to do. Exactly. The what the presidents would, what, are what the Clemson, SEC. Yeah. What What would Clemson do if if they join the SEC? I they, think the they, ACC they, has they, the same rule, but Clemson got an exception put in, maybe. I, I don't I don't know, but the ACC and as does the Big Ten, I'm pretty sure, have a rule against this. I think all the major conferences do. I'll, ha I'll have to look that up, but uh, we, we're out of time, Jared. So let's let's go and end today's episode. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by the Cloud Nothings, the Cloud Nothings um, from Northeast Ohio. I was about to say Cleveland. Then I was like, oh, wait, are they Akron? But no, I think I think they're I think they're Cleveland. Uh, I think they're Cleveland. But yeah, uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Uh, once again, this is the Cloud Nothings. Mm -hmm.